Hello, my name is Barbara. I am an educator at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. I am your tour guide today for this virtual Animals in Art tour. On our tour, we will be looking at eight artworks of animals from the Minneapolis Institute of Art. We will look closely at each of the artworks to come up with words to describe each animal and to respond to some questions. Feel free to press pause on your video anytime you want to spend more time looking at any of the animals. I also encourage you to get a pencil and some paper in case you want to draw some animals of your own during the tour. Or you might like to have a pencil to write down your answers to the questions. Press pause now and just press it again when you are ready. I will tell you a little bit about each animal artwork and I will ask you some questions to encourage close looking and thinking. There are no right or wrong answers. One of the questions I will ask at every artwork is, do you think this animal is more real or more imaginary? This is kind of like make-believe. Look for clues that help you figure out if you think the artist was being kind of like a scientist, making close observations of the animal, or if they were making up the animal in their imagination, real or not real. You can talk about your answers with others around you, or you can answer them in your mind if you are watching this tour alone. Now it is time to look at our first artwork. Let's look at the animals and think about what is realistic about them and what is more imaginary. Describe the two lions in this watercolor. What are some of the details you notice? What about the picture looks real or scientific? Pause the video to take as much time as you need to look closely at the lions. What were you noticing? Did you notice the details of their faces? Their paws? Their claws? Their muscles? Now compare and contrast the male and female lions. The male has the big head of hair. What do they have in common? How are they different? You sure noticed a lot of details. Do you think these lions look more real or more imaginary? The painting is called Royalty at Home. Why do you suppose the painter Rosa Bonheur called it Royalty at Home? She painted the live lions that she kept in her own home in France. While it is not a good idea to have lions as pets today, she had them at home so she could paint them all the time. She studied and drew the lions a lot in order to show their beauty, their movements, their muscles. So although the lions are very real looking, she made up the African environment or landscape that she painted them in. She wanted them to look more natural or real. What are some of the details she includes in the landscape around the royal lions? A little bit about Rosa. She was a French artist who specialized in making animal art. She was widely considered to be the most famous female painter in Europe during the 1800s. In 1865, she was awarded the very important medal of the National Order of the Legion of Honor by France's Empress. Banur broke all kinds of rules that were in place to limit women in her day so that she could paint animals outside. She even went to the local Institute of Veterinary Sciences to study animals. She wanted her animal artworks to look very real. Great job looking and thinking. The next artwork on our tour is a giant lobster from Ghana in Africa. Let's see what we can figure out from looking at it. Describe this giant lobster made out of wood and painted. What are some of the details that you notice? What about the lobster sculpture 
looks real or scientific? What about the lobster looks more make-believe or imaginary? What do you see that makes you say so? Pause the video to take as much time as you need to look closely at the lobster. What were you noticing? Did you notice the details of the lobster's legs? The shell? Look at the eyes and feelers. Now look closely at the colors of the lobster. You sure noticed a lot of details. This lobster is actually a coffin in the shape of a spiny lobster made by artist Soa Kwe in Ghana. He put it together from dozens of parts, covered it with plaster, and sprayed it with acrylic paint. It is called a fantasy coffin because it was never intended for burial. Spiny lobsters are a common catch in the warm waters off Ghana's coast in West Africa. Among the Ga in Ghana, fabulous coffins are made in a shape that says something about the person for whom it is made and are an important part of funeral celebrations. Why might the spiny lobster depicted here be a logical choice for a fisherman's fantasy coffin? What kind of animal would you want to show in a fantasy coffin or other kind of box? Maybe you want a really small box and a really small animal. This would be a good time to pause the video and draw what kind of animal box you would like. What colors would you add? How would you make it fun? The tradition of shaped coffins is not old, but grew out of the practice among the Ga of carrying chiefs on sleigh-like seats in the shape of symbolic animals during festival celebrations. Many of the details of this lobster are very realistic. The artist had clearly seen spiny lobsters. Other aspects of this animal are more make-believe. The artist had to use his imagination to make the lobster fit the coffin shape and to make it a bright and bold statement piece. After all, it is called a fantasy coffin. Now that you have done a great job looking at this giant lobster, let's go to the next artwork that is filled with small details to tell us about some moths and caterpillars. Describe this picture of moths, caterpillars, and flowers. What words would you use to describe the caterpillars in this picture? What words would you use to describe the butterflies? What are some of the details you notice? What about the picture looks real or scientific? What do you see that makes you say so? What, if anything, looks make-believe or imaginary? What do you see that makes you say so? Pause the video to take as much time as you need to look closely at the picture. What were you noticing? Did you notice the details of the moths, their wings, antennae, and bodies? Or did you notice the spots and stripes on the caterpillars? What about the holes in the leaves? Look again. Did you see something new? You sure noticed a lot of details. What are the caterpillar and moths doing in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? The artist wanted to show various stages of the moth's growth. Each stage looks very different. Where is the egg stage? The caterpillar, the pupa in the cocoon. Over 300 years ago, Maria Sibylla Marion, the artist of this print, traveled from Europe to South America to study and make art showing wildlife, especially butterflies, moths, and caterpillars. She made careful studies of nature and provided new information to the sciences of botany and zoology. She combined scientific investigation with her artistic imagination. 
she could not have seen all the stages of a moth's growth that she shows here, cocoon, pupa, caterpillar, and butterfly, at the exact same time in nature. Why do you suppose the artist Maria Sibylla Marion showed them this way anyway? This colorful print shows two giant silk moths, a variety found mainly in South and Central America from Mexico to Bolivia and Ecuador to Southeastern Brazil. The larvae depicted here are actually a different species. The plant in the center is the palisade tree, which can grow 65 feet tall and is native to tropical South America. Our next animal is much larger than a moth or caterpillar. Let's see what you think about it. Look closely at this sculpture. How would you describe Ganesha the elephant? What is realistic looking about the elephant? What is imaginary looking? What do you see that makes you say that? Maybe you are thinking that elephants don't usually sit up as though they were little kids. This is no ordinary elephant. Ganesha is a Hindu god. This sculpture of him comes from the island of Java in Indonesia. The artist carved it from a single piece of volcanic stone called andesite. Ganesha is a guardian deity and statues of him often decorate temples and appear in the homes of believers. Beloved and playful, he is the remover of obstacles and the Lord of success. Hindus invoke his help to smooth the way to remove distractions and protect them from evil. Let's look closely for a little longer. What details are you noticing? What are you wondering about? Ganesha sits on a base in the shape of a double lotus flower. Many aspects of the sculpture refer to his story, including the time when his father could not find the boy's lost head and replaced it with an elephant's head. He eats sweetmeats from a bowl in his lower left hand. His braided headdress shows a protective crescent moon and skull. His lower right hand grasps a broken tusk, a symbol of his wisdom and knowledge, while his upper right hand holds a rosary topped with a pomegranate, a symbol of abundance. In his upper left hand, he displays a battle axe used to counter evil. Ganesha is holding symbols that tell his stories. What symbols would you include in a sculpture of you to tell your story? The sculpture is filled with imaginative details, but also shows that the artist knew what Asian elephants look like. He had to imagine what an elephant head would look like on the body of a child. Ganesha provides a visual, spiritual inspiration to people of Hindu beliefs. Even in the United States, many people turn to Ganesha to help them move past things that are troubling them or preventing them from doing things. How do you remove obstacles or barriers in your life? Our next artwork also includes details that are both animal and human. This artwork is a rattle made in the shape of a bird. It was part of a Northwest Coast Native American man ceremonial dress. Where do you see the raven on this rattle? Where is his head? Where are his wings? Where is the human form on the sculpture? What about this sculpture looks like a real raven? What looks imaginary? What do you see that makes you say that? Raven is a trickster. Raven, who in the mythic past stole the sun from its hiding place and put it in the heavens, established the universe we know today. Did you notice how on Raven's back, a tiny human figure interacts with a smaller bird, his tongue joined to the bird's beak? This connection shows communication between the human and animal worlds. In the late 1800s, 
Northwest Coast Native Americans observed many religious and social obligations. Among wealthy families, these occasions required special dress and ornaments. Women made the clothing while men carved wooden masks and accessories. Filled with small pebbles, the rattle may have helped keep the rhythm of a dance. Imagine what that might sound like. The complex design of this rattle is characteristic of Northwest Coast art. The five different figures that make up this rattle fit together like pieces of a puzzle. Imagine that you have taken this puzzle apart. Which part of the rattle seems most important? What do you see that makes you say that? Geometric shapes are shapes that come from simple geometry. For example, the circle, square, triangle, and rectangle. Organic shapes are irregular shapes. Are the shapes that make up this sculpture more geometric or more organic? Now look at the lines that decorate the organic shapes. Do these lines form organic or geometric shapes? How has the artist integrated these two different kinds of shapes on this sculpture. This required a great deal of imagination. Raven is one of the most popular characters in Haida stories because of all his actions, especially stealing the sun from a box and putting it in the sky. What animal characters appear frequently in stories that you have heard? What are their stories? This would be a good time to press pause if you would like to draw one of these animals. The next animal is also made up of different shapes and designs. Take a moment to look closely at this sculpture. What are you noticing? See how the baboon's head is made by attaching two toy cars together. What other objects do you think the artist Picasso used to make this? What do you see that makes you say that? What about this looks like a real baboon? What looks more imaginary? Many everyday objects appear in this sculpture of an adult baboon and its baby, an example of how anything can be turned into a work of art. We do not know for certain what all of the objects are, because this is not the original. Some people think the baboon's torso and shoulders are made from a round clay pot with high handles. Some people think the backbone and long tail are made from a curving steel spring. The rest of the body and the figure of the baby were modeled from clay and the whole piece was cast in bronze. Pablo Picasso was a father of young children when he made this sculpture. He had a son, Claude, and a daughter, Paloma. He often made artworks about parenthood with subjects that were both humans and animals with babies. Look closely. What words would you use to describe the relationship between this parent and this baby? How does Picasso express that? What do you see that makes you say that? Think about someone you love and care for. How do you show them you love them? How does that make you feel? How would you use your imagination to show that in a work of art? Our next animal artwork is artistic and functional. Look closely at this Japanese painting of cranes. What do you see? Describe some of the details you are noticing. Do the cranes look more realistic or imaginary? What do you see that makes you say that? What parts look real? What about the painting does not look real? Imagine you are standing with the cranes. What sounds do you hear? What does it smell like? How does it feel? What do you see that makes you say that? Pretend you are running your hand down the leg of a crane. What does it feel like? Imagine you are petting one on the back. How do the feathers feel between your fingers? 
Cranes represent a long life and good fortune. They can also represent wisdom and understanding. They are incredibly important across many Asian cultures, especially in Japan, China, and Korea. How did the artist Ishida Yute show you these cranes were special? What do you see that makes you say that? What animal is most important to you? If you were to paint a picture of it, what would you do to make it look important? If you like, press pause and make a drawing of your favorite animal. The artist worked for the court, which meant he painted for important rulers and other royalty. He was very skilled and made all of the crane's details look realistic. At the same time, he also made the painting very decorative by covering the background in thin sheets of gold. Folding screens from Japan, like this one, are both an artwork and an object to be used. It is a highly decorated artwork that would be put in large open spaces to create smaller temporary rooms. It is one of a pair of two movable screens. The final artwork on our tour is actually two animals. The ceramic camels you see here were once placed in a tomb. Look closely at these two camels. Describe each one. What details do you notice? Compare and contrast camels. What do they have in common? How are they different? Do you think the camels are more realistic or imaginary? What do you see that makes you say that? In China, during a period called the Tang Dynasty, camel figures became popular grave objects because they symbolized the wealth individuals acquired through trade. The great size of these camels shows that they came from an important burial. The bearded man is a camel herder. He rides a Bactrian two-humped camel, and they are accompanied by a one-humped dromedary. As the Chinese empire extended across most of Central Asia during the Tang Dynasty, the need for camels was enormous. Although camels don't particularly like to be ridden, in ancient China, they were the ideal form of transportation along the trade routes known as the Silk Road. The routes included several spans of desert that were too difficult to cross with carts and too dry and barren to sustain horses. The artist most likely saw camels in the marketplace where they regularly appeared in some cities hundreds of years ago. Where could you go to study and draw animals today? What kinds of animals would you like to draw? If you'd like, take some time when you finish this tour to draw some of the animals you learned about today. Thank you so much for spending time with some of the amazing animals at Mia. We hope you will come visit the museum to see these animals and so many others.